Om Shanti. Today is a beautiful day. Yes. Let me ask this question to you. Do we all love Baba? And Baba loves us? Who loves more? Why? We don't love more. Baba loves us more. How can we say that? Huh? So he has more capacity. What else? His love is unconditional and our love is conditional. So, how can we say that Baba loves us more? His love is unconditional, yes. What else? Is the ocean of love. Okay. We are master ocean of love. No? We are master ocean of love. Huh? We are long lost and now found children, so he loves us more. But we also have found Baba after 5,000 years. So we should also love him more. No? Okay, we have love for Baba, isn't it? We all agree that? What is the proof of that? What is the proof of our love? We are here. <laughs> oh, we recognize Baba, definitely. But what is the proof of our love for Baba? Following Srimad, okay? Our happiness. What else? Oh, we love what Baba loves, okay? Our love for Baba is also there. Baba's love is greater. We have accepted that. Our love is number-wise, we would say. Definitely, some love more, some love less. Do we love ourselves? What is the proof of that? That we love ourselves. Because if we really love ourselves, then we can never think negative. We can never think hmm, waste about our own self. If we love ourself, then whatever Baba's desire is, I'm ready to fulfill that. If I really love Baba, then the proof of that love is complete transformation. Normally in Baba's Avyakta Murli's Baba say, when you love Baba, you know how to turn yourself to what Baba desires. Not to Bring that transformation. What do we need to change? Sanskars. What else do we need to change? The biggest thing is sanskars, yes. We need to change our Deep-rooted sanskars, deep-rooted for two ages. We have been holding on to those sanskars. So we need to bring about a complete transformation in that. When I say Baba loves us, as she mentioned that it is, uh, his love is unconditional, not only that, but he has accepted us as we are. 
each one of us is full full of so many mistakes each one of us is full of so many weaknesses each one of us has so much of karmic accounts and in that also the negative karmic accounts but he never looked at our weaknesses he never looked at our shortcomings in life he didn't look at our old past sanskars huh? the negative sanskars we had he accepted us unconditionally no expectations he gives us the understanding yes so that we love ourselves and we are able to bring about a change we can only bring a change in ourselves when we really love ourselves if i don't love myself how can i bring a change till we came to baba or even sometimes now we always put the whatever happens we put the blame on to others we want others to change but if we really love ourselves and we know that baba loves me the most i start bringing the change within myself in my sanskars and what baba wants me to be i start becoming that isn't it that is the proof that yes i also love myself i start changing today in the world people they don't love themselves and that is why they think so much of negative and gradually they're landing up in depression and they don't want want to live they want to end up their lives this shows that they don't love themselves but after becoming baba's children we develop that love for the self and we have new hopes new vision that now i'm going to that new world and in order to go to that new world definitely when i change that vision for myself i start loving myself making efforts doing purusharth is loving the self that's why i start making efforts if i wouldn't have loved myself i wouldn't have started making efforts to change so that is why now that i love myself i bring this change and on the basis of true understanding and knowledge that baba has given me i use and apply that knowledge in the right manner and i start decorating myself with those jewels of knowledge with the virtues with the powers and this is how i start becoming that what baba wants me to be that is my love for baba that i start bringing a change a complete transformation in myself how would be I, i how would i be able to do that now we all want to change our sanskars don't we but what is coming in between we realize yes we want to change 
we are also fed up with those old sanskars isn't it we want to change but again and again they come up that is when sometimes people get disheartened in their lives that they want to bring the change but why is those old sanskars coming up again and again and we all know where our weakness is if someone points out our weakness look you have this weakness what would we say no no it's not like that it just came up today <laughs> we never accept isn't it acceptance is not there but internally i know yes this is my weakness internally internally we know so now if i want to bring about a change first i have to understand how a sanskar is formed how is the sanskar created repeating the same thing the same karma but still whenever sanskar is formed it is formed on the first basis thought emerges <coughs> even if it is a wrong thing in the world people are doing wrong things and that is how the wrong sanskars are coming up but first it begins with the thought maybe wrong decisions taken in life those thoughts and with those thoughts the feelings they get merged i start feeling on the basis of that together with the feelings visualization and with the visualization the karma and then again and again those thoughts those feelings those uh, visualizations and karma that forms the sanskars that creates a sanskar so now if i want to remove the sanskars how would i do that baba has given us beautiful thoughts and we have beautiful feelings that we can merge with merge with that thoughts and on the basis of that when that is combined we visualize ourselves being that so the mind and intellect the intellect which is divinized by baba and the mind which is purified by baba when they both get together a beautiful visualization is there and then we bring into act that is how we form new sanskars and when i get busy in again and again doing that act the time and space is not there for the old sanskars to interfere because i'm busy with this new set of sanskars preparing myself for the new world so then when the over a long period of time when there is no time and space for that sanskar that is how gradually it starts becoming weak loose and finally it fades away it's gone or it is merged because we have emerged our divine sanskars for the new world another thing a very deep realization helps us to bring about a change like we have heard stories in the scriptures valmiki who is the creator of 
Ramayana. But originally he was a dacoit. And he was looting people. One day, when a sannyasi was passing by and he wanted to loot him, he said, give whatever you have. So the sannyasi say, said to him, why are you doing this? Why are you looting people? So he said, well, I have to sustain my family. So the sannyasi said, first, go and ask your family. Whatever karma you are doing, when you have to reap the fruits of those actions, are they going to be your partners in reaping that fruit? So he said, why not? I'm doing it for them, so they will also be the partners in reaping the fruits. He said, first, go and ask them. So he goes up to the family members and asks them, whatever I'm doing, when I have to reap the fruits of those actions, you'll all be with me, isn't it? And each one said, why? Why should we be with you? You are doing the karma, you reap the fruit. Why should we reap your fru fruits? You enjoy your fruits. We will enjoy our fruits. And that realization brought a change, complete change. So in order to bring a change, deep realization. Whatever the weak sun scars which are coming up again and again, let me ask myself, when I have to reap the fruits of these weaknesses, what will be the form? And how much will I be able to enjoy it? Is it wise enough? After knowing the karma philosophy, then also still becoming a slave of that weakness. And what is the use of knowledge if I am not able to apply knowledge at that time? So when there is a deep realization, the change starts. Another deep realization is when I have this realization, who is asking me to change? Who is asking me to change? The Supreme Being, for which people may say, Oh, if the Supreme was teaching you, you could have done anything with his powers. And how come you didn't do it? In the end, when Baba will be glorified and people will come to know about it, and they will say, even your family members may say, well, you recognized God. And still you were not able to bring a change? Why you didn't have love for God? If we were in your place, we would have brought so much of change. And after recognizing also, if you were not able to change your sanskars, what was the use? You just wasted your life. Wouldn't they tell us? Wouldn't they tell us? What were you doing all these years? After recognizing him, was it your love for God? Why you didn't love yourself? You didn't want to bring a change in yourself? Wouldn't they tell us this? In the end, what were you all doing? Wasting your time after knowing him also? So who is asking me to 
change, who's giving me this pure understanding. And applying that pure understanding every time when I know and understand it becomes easy for me to change. Like if we take the example from Mahabharat, Arjuna, who was a great warrior, and when God asked him to fight, he said, No, I'm not going to fight. He refused completely. He said, I don't want to fight. Then God said to him, Look, if you fight, I'll make you the king of kings. I'll give you the kingdom of heaven. And what did Arjuna say? I don't want any kingdom. I don't want to fight. Then he said, look, anyway, these, are, these people are evil people. They have to die. You just have to be an instrument. And what did Arjuna say? Why should I be the instrument? I don't want to be the instrument. I don't want to take all that sin on my head. I don't want to fight. Then, in the twelfth chapter, he was shown who is asking you to do this. That realization. And when he realized God himself I was not knowing him. I took him as my ordinary friend. I thought he was just a friend. But who is he after realizing, after seeing the uh, eternal form, who's asking me to do this? And then he said, Okay, I'm ready to fight. I've conquered my attachment. I've destroyed all my attachment. I will fight. After that realization, who is asking me to do it? A complete change. Till then he was saying no. Similarly, if we look at Brahma Baba's life, Brahma Baba also, when he had the vision of destruction, initially, when he had the first vision of destruction, and then he heard the voice, look, you have to be an instrument to create such a world. Was Brahma Baba also ready? No. He had unlimited disinterest, definitely, but he was not ready. How can I do this? I'm a single person. How will I create such a world and such a big destruction? He was not ready. I cannot do it on my own. He also did not start making efforts immediately. Then, Baba said, I'll make you the king of kings. You will become the master of heaven. And he said, but how come? How can I be the master of the heavenly kingdom? He felt as if there is something wrong that is happening with me. But then when he had the divine vision of Shri Baba, the three worlds, and he saw that light, that immense powerful light coming and entering, saying some words, 
and when the light again went back that's when he realized who is asking me to do this who is asking me to do this the supreme being the almighty authority and immediately he started making efforts he changed completely he called his family members and said look god wants something else from me so from today i won't give a penny of whatever i've earned to anyone whether you want to stay with me or not hmm? so the eldest son's son said no i want to go away okay you are you happily can go away you won't get anything from there no problem when narayan dada he said i'll be with you he said okay and then in the yagya when the time came during that beggary time and his shirt was torn so lachu dadi used to look after the clothes and the stock so he went up to lachu dadi and said i want a new shirt so she said why do you show me your old shirt it's torn show me so when he showed that oh, you can stitch that and wear it so narayan dada suddenly those old sanskars came up and said everything belongs to my father and who are you to refuse so dadi went to baba and said baba he is saying this and baba called him nothing is your father's he has dedicated everything he is a trustee just imagine the guts and when he had the feeling my father who was once a richest man today is going through this beggary part and he asked permission from baba can i go and earn and bring back to the yagya whatever is to whatever is needed baba said i knew that you were going to go i was also just seeing what is the right time so he also went and baba said but i can't give you any penny of this from this yagya you will have to start from scratch wherever you want to go you can go he also went and only nirmal shanta dadi was with baba the only child left with baba out of all the five children because she realized who is talking to me she used to share this in her experiences that when she baba had entered she did not even know realize so one day she came to meet baba and she asked baba baba will you meet me tomorrow will you send the car tomorrow i would like to come again to meet you and baba said i don't know very honestly he said i don't know whether i can send you the car so she felt so bad how can my father say like this and so she just went away 
She couldn't sleep. She called Baba. How can you say such things? So Baba said, it was not me, it was he. I didn't say anything to you. That's when she started realizing, who is that? Who was talking to me? And that realization made her give up, give up everything, her household, her small daughter of six months. She gave up. And she came to Baba, dedicated. After realizing Shri Baba's greatness, who is asking me to give up everything? 